welcome to you mobile source air toxic risk assessment and we are presenting here the basis for air dispersion modeling this is me 760 at the university of waterloo today we're going to discuss the dispersion modeling from mobile sources we will focus on on-road mobile sources i will repeat all the topics that we discuss here applies directly to non-road mobile sources but our focus is solely on on-road mobile sources where the atmospheric impacts we can see that we have man-made sources those could be from factories large stacks those could be from vehicles and it could be uh, we call this anthropogenic sources sources that are caused by humans we also have natural sources this is a volcano. We also have dust, desert dust. We have emissions from forests. They emit a lot of volatile organic compounds. So this emits to the atmosphere and it's transported by winds. Then we're going to have deposition over the soils. You see here, this is a water body or deposit on the water body. A deposit on these soils here, we call this the watershed, the land surrounding the water body. If it rains, they will wash the pollutants that deposit here, not all of them, and they will come to the water body. Now, if this is being transported by wind and it rains, it will wash the pollutants, not all of them, out of the atmosphere and bring it to water bodies and to watersheds. So these are just some examples of the atmospheric impacts. Air impacts can be caused by smelters, combustion coming from power plants or cars, fugitive hazardous air pollutants. We talked about this in the last lecture. One of them is evaporative losses. Those are fugitive haps. Industrial processes, they can have in terms of fugitive sources or they are part of the process pesticide applications these are type of air impacts our topic today air dispersion modeling for mobile sources let's discuss here air dispersion modeling the issue with air dispersion modeling is only related to emissions to the atmosphere and the, how it will reduce the concentration because that is emit it could be a point source like this stack or it could be a vehicle a car could be a tractor could be a bus a truck a ship an airplane our job is to see once it is emitted this pollutant will dilute in air as it is transported it will mix with ambient air which is cleaner than the plume of pollutants we emit and it will dilute that plume it will increase in size and as it travels from the source what is the concentration at the receptor what is the deposition of pollutants on this receptor and this is part of what we need to analyze and as you can see here we will have transformation of these chemicals case in point we emit so2 it will convert to h2so4 which is sulfuric acid it will be advected this is basically the wind pushing the pollutant as it carrying it as it travels we have diffusion this is basically the mixing because as there is advection, there is also mixing with ambient air that dilutes this pollutant. Advection and diffusion is what we call the dispersion. So when you hear about dispersion modeling, we are accounting for advection and diffusion in one term, dispersion. And we have the removal. Let's say we emit very large particles. Those will drop out of the plume and deposit on surfaces, be it water bodies or watersheds. When we do dispersion modeling, the x-axis will be changing according to the wind speed. So if the wind is in this direction here, then this is the x-axis. Again, I'm showing you here a stack, but what, whatever I'm presenting here applies to mobile sources as well. Now, 90 degrees from the x-axis, we have the y-axis on the horizontal plane. On the vertical plane, as we go here, up and down, on, we have the z-axis. So we have, as we emit, a spread of the plume on the y-axis but we also have a spread of the plume on the vertical direction the z-axis there is a spread of the plume as you can see here we emit it didn't spread much right here and as we get farther 
then we have here it spreads farther this is the width of this plume we will see that the width of the plume is 4.3 times this spread here that we will call sigma y in the horizontal and it's 4.3 times the sigma z on the vertical the spread on the vertical and how do we compute these coefficients we would have empirical measurements on different atmospheric stability and you need to go and study atmospheric stability i will not present this in the course we will have homework which is running screen view you will download from the course website and you will have to run screen view all the stability classes to understand how a tall stack or a short stack or a vehicle will change concentration in the different stability classes and these measurements here defined how much the plume spread for example if the atmosphere in a state that we call stability class a and we release pollutants we take pictures how the plume is spreading and then we know that spread of the plume and this is empirical they nobody measured to 100 kilometers these were done usually to three kilometers the rest is just extrapolation and here's the sigma y if I multiply the sigma y, I know I'm one kilometer. This is in kilometers, one kilometer, stability class A. I have here 110 meters. And here's a plume on plan view, looking from the top as if, and the plume would behave like this. This is instantaneous plume. This could be for a vehicle as well. Let's say it's stopped on a stoplight and the wind is blowing from the left to the right, and the plume will not go straight like this. It will meander. It will oscillate like this. And this is not represented by a Gaussian plume. What is a Gaussian plume? A Gaussian plume would be the average of all the positions of the plume at least 10 minutes. Can I use this less than 10 minutes? This approximation to a Gaussian plume breaks down less than 10 minutes. And what is this? If I measure from here to here across every second, I see the plume going one way, later on it goes another way, and the concentrations on these points that I'm measuring every second changes with time. But if I average all of them along the center line here, I have 90 degrees and I measure here, this is the center line, the concentrations will be represented by a curve like this. This is a bell curve, a Gaussian curve, a probability density function that is normal. And that's how the concentration will distribute. This is the example of what I just said. In a wind tunnel, I release the plume. It will be behaving like this. Later on, this plume in the wind tunnel will be behaving differently. If I have a camera in the same wind tunnel, it took pictures of this. I just maintain the shutter open. And on average, the picture will be this. And as you can see, this is a Gaussian plume. So again, instantaneous, on average, then it will look like that. Same thing for a refinery tall stacks. The wind blows, this plume is going all over the place. It goes all, it doesn't look like that. The plume cannot be at the same time over here and over here. But if you see the spread here, this plume all look Gaussian. And this is what the mathematics we use, the Gaussian plume equation. It will represent then the concentrations that this plume will cause in the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. Another concept we need to cover here is the concept of mixing height. At night, the ground cools faster than the air. Therefore, it cools this air over here. And this is cooler than the air above. Daytime, the sun hits the ground. It will hit this ground here, it will heat up fairly fast, and it will create convection cells. Why do you need to know that? Because if I have a tall stack, daytime the plume will be transported by these convective cells. They circulate like this, and they can bring the plume down. So daytime I have a mechanism, these convective cells, bring the plume down. So for tall stacks, daytime, for flat terrain, I will cause the highest concentrations. Nighttime, the tall stack is not involved in this layer here. The wind blows, and by blowing over surfaces that have rugosity, 
it will then create eddies here. These are not convective cells because you need heat to have convective cells. But they will progress like this, circulating. So they can mix pollutants at this height here. And they can mix this and cause the mixing of the pollutants. A tall stack over here above this mixing height is not involved in this mixing. So the plume will just travel straight just like this jet contrail that we see here. It will not mix downwards. Now if I have a source that is emitted ground level for mobile emitters, they're at ground level. At daytime, because I have the convective cells, I'm bringing clean air from the top, diluting this and bringing the pollutants up. So I can dilute faster the pollutants from cars, pollutants from fugitive emissions that are close to the ground. Nighttime, I do not have this mechanism that will bring clean air from the top and taking the pollutants upwards. So nighttime, if I emit the same amount, I can only mix up to this height here, which is the mixing height for the night. And this is the Gaussian plume equation. As you can see here, I find the sigma y from the curves. And in air mod, I use special formulation based on the planetary boundary layer theory. And I compute the sigma z. This u is the wind speed. The q is the emission rate, how much pollutant I'm emitting per second. This is location for y. This is the sigma y again. And this is the e raised to this power here, okay? This is E raised to this power. And this is the Z location. I want to do my calculation. I select the Z to compute the calculations. I select the Y. I know what is atmospheric stability. Then I get my sigma Y, sigma Z. I know the emission rate and I measure the wind speed. I can then compute this and get my concentration. I can even do this calculation on a simple Excel spreadsheet. The difficulty is doing this millions of times, computing like Hermod does, the sigma y in a very complex manner, and the sigma z. And doing all those calculations is difficult to complete in an Excel spreadsheet. We're going to use screen view for you to learn. And in our applications, we will use AirMod from the US EPA. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me. Thank you very much.